casa Sue ele é o lumen Conversation with the people who were with me In the world TV Got lost tonight Got lost tonight Historias de un reportero Hey everybody, bienvenidos and welcome to Carlos tonight. Thank you so much for listening and for watching. I really appreciate it. Before we get things started, I want to invite you to check out my website. That's carlostonight.com. There you can find the latest information on the podcast, see upcoming guests, and check out past episodes. That's carlostonight.com. All right, my uh, guest this week has worked in the restaurant industry for 30 years. He's a former New Yorker who decided to one day pack his bags and explore the world. And he says, you can do it too. So I'm very happy and excited to welcome Paul B. Kennedy. How are you? <laughs> I'm well, Carlos. How are you? Greetings Great. from Hanoi. Great. Um, I want to ask where you're connecting uh, from and how the weather is out there. I'm in Hanoi. It's, uh, we, do, we still use Celsius here. So I think it's uh, in the 20s. So it's pretty warm. It's about um, mid seventies right now, Fahrenheit. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, so I guess the big question is, what made you decide to pack your bags and travel the world? No particular thing, Carlos. Uh, I just I went on a birthday trip, and just at the end of the trip, on the last day when my friends left me, I just kept going. It was that one decision made in that one minute. I thought about it, but nothing planned. And kind of like that movie, um, uh, what is it, Tuscany? I haven't seen that. What happens? Um, she, <laughs> well, well she, she, she's getting a divorce, and okay. so her friends bought her a ticket, and so she goes traveling, and okay. then she like goes to Tuscany and like sees it, and and was like, you know what? I'm going to buy this house. And she buys a house, buys a crew to fix it up, and then she lives there. It's amazing. I Actually, it's funny because I met a lady in a hotel once who she got went through a divorce, and she bought herself a ticket to go to Vietnam. Um, so she started out on vacation, but she turned into a traveler where she delayed her trip back. She downsized from all of her luggage. She got rid of her books. She went down to a, simply a backpack um, and just started traveling. It was amazing. I was like, wait, whoa, that's a, wow. you know, a grown kids. And she just, once she realized, once she got here, she said, you know, this is, I need to, I need to explore. So it was pretty cool seeing the transformation in someone else. In right. someone else. Wow. Were you um, scared at all? Very, very. I, I never had a passport until the week I left. Oh, to, really? To go on my birthday trip. I didn't have a backpack. Um, I didn't have a passport. So the week I left, I received my passport and I ordered a backpack in the mail, not thinking I would keep traveling, but because someone else who had vacationed had suggested, had said, you know, it's much easier if you don't bring luggage. It just makes sense if you don't bring luggage, especially because my birthday was on a, on a boat. He said, it just makes sense. So I received my backpack and my passport the week I left. Well, happy 21st birthday, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Carlos. <laughs> so is it, how, or how easy is it for somebody um, to do what you did? It's easier than we realize. And the more I talk about it, the more I realize that most people are afraid of the unknown. So even though their excuses are similar, they are just excuses. So is it easy? Yes. If you have a conversation and break down the reasons why, there are typically not valid reasons. Mm -hmm. So I hear I have kids. If I didn't have kids, I would do it. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to travel forever. You know, mm -hmm. you're, someone could watch your kids for the summer or for a few weeks or whatever it may be, whatever time you can allow yourself. They mentioned money. But the same people always are flying across the country to a wedding or going on vacation somewhere. So it's typically not the money either. It's typically just they're afraid and they just don't know what to expect. 
That's kind of like um, when people are trying to decide if they should hire a personal trainer. And even though it, it may cost like $500 a month, let's say, right. um, they always say, well, you go to Starbucks, you go to McDonald's and all this stuff. And that adds up to almost like $500. Right. So and it's it, kind of similar. It's very similar. And, and we hear that a lot now with the gas prices. Oh, well, oh, yeah. you'll, you'll pay that much at Starbucks is always the example I hear. Look mm -hmm. how much you know, uh, iced tea or coffee is at Starbucks per gallon. So, yes, it's very, very, very similar. Um, the money is there for most people. Plus it was, so I was living in New York at the time. And before New York, I lived in Charleston, South Carolina. It's cheaper for me to fly from New York to Vietnam than it is New York to Charleston. Oh, wow. And a hotel in Vietnam, I can stay here for probably a month for what I would spend at a hotel in Charleston. So it's, it's not the money. It's not the money. It's not the money. So where all have you traveled? Well, I arrived, um, I arrived in Italy just before my birthday trip. So that was to hopefully catch up with a friend. Uh, after Greece, I stayed in Greece for a month after my birthday trip. And then I went to Turkey, uh, Thailand, China. Here, since I've been here, I've also been to Laos and Cambodia as well. So since you're a chef, can you um, describe the, the food? that you tasted on these um, trips? It's uh, it's nothing like what we're used to in the States, but that's normal because we Americanize Everything. different cultures. <laughs> food. Yeah, we, Americanize it. We, we, we change things to our taste. It makes sense, right. but they do the same thing here. So when I have spaghetti here, not often, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's very sweet. So everything here, I have yet to taste food that tastes similar to American food. The barbecue tastes different, the, the spaghetti tastes different. They, they adjust it to their taste and it's normal. Yeah. So how does a food taste? It's different, it's, it's typically, um, all I can say is it feels more authentic. Yeah. And it's you, at first, you, you have to appreciate, you have to sometimes take time to appreciate it because there's huge adjustments. If there's more or less sugar or, or, the flavor combinations. So they'll use different spices because they're not available. Mm -hmm. um, so how's the food taste? It's different, but it's typically simpler and fresher. Gotcha. That's the overall. So out of all the places you've been, um, do you have a favorite? And how long did you stay yeah. in those um, spots? Oh, really? OK. In <laughs> Vietnam. Um, I was a month in, a month in Greece. And I did uh, spend a month in Turkey. The other ones were shorter trips, but here the, there's so much culture. I guess a month in Thailand, the mm. there's just so much culture here, and it's not. Yes, there is westernized parts here, but it, it's so much less westernized, or so much less influence, and there's so much more thousands of years of culture that's still around that you mm. don't see in in the other countries. That's what I like. Is there's so much to learn every day. Every day I go outside, I'm thankful and not mm -hmm. in a spiritual way. It's just, I'm always learning. I can't stop staring and asking questions. When I first moved to New York, I would not listen to music because I enjoyed listening to the sounds and the different accents people had and the, the different languages. And, but that went away after about a year here. Yeah. I still do not. I mm -hmm. still want to hear every sound and I want to know where it's coming from and why. So I, I've been here, you know, three, three and a half years. Wow. So I bet your camera roll is full of pictures. It is. It is. And I, I messed up because I do photography as well. I messed up and I, I basically deleted a lot oh, no. at one point. Oh. But it's, it's good. It's fine. I still have the pictures um, from, you know, where I've posted on my social media. They're just not print quality anymore, which is fine because really the pictures serve as a memory. I heard right. someone talk about not taking selfies, but you really, if you take a picture of something without you in it versus you in it, even if you take it yourself, you remember how you felt when you took that picture. Mm -hmm. You do. You remember the entire day. It took me so long to get to this whatever location and this is how I felt and it was hot or cold 
I was you, you all the feelings are conjured up if you're in the photo. So mm -hmm. take take selfies, everyone. They're good. So you have a new uh, a cookbook that's coming out later this year. What inspired that? What inspired it? Um, well, when I was being inspired by other people to keep traveling, people that I've met, the the fir very first person was doing was a digital nomad and he was working, he built websites uh, from wherever he traveled. And I asked him what I could do to <laughs> in my field in hospitality. He said, well, well, not all fields are can tra be transferred to traveling. But he heard that a lot of people opened hostels, a lot of expats. Mm -hmm. So when I got to Vietnam, I ended up opening a hostel. Okay. I opened up, I opened up a, a hotel and a travel agency. When COVID hit, I paused them all, essentially closed them, thankfully, because it is worse of a rat race than it is in New York. I just put myself right back into what I knew, and it was, I lost the traveling vibe. So the cookbook, someone had offered, again, everything's different here, so it's going to sound a little weird, but someone offered me a place to open a restaurant for free because it's a way it uh, has to do with the police and it keeps, helps them keep their land. And um, so I started, I just jumped at it because at the opportunity, because A, I'm a business person. I love opening businesses. It's just easy for me and being a chef. Mm -hmm. But then I, it hit me. I was like, I don't want to get back into that rat race. But while I was doing that, because it was so tempting, I started developing all the recipes. Then there I was with all the recipes and I wanted to inspire people to travel. Mm -hmm. I really want, even if it's one person, I want to get at least one person to travel. I realized the cookbook could be a voice. It could be a platform to, if I kept it lighthearted, to, to try to inspire somebody to take that plunge and travel because you really do learn a lot mm -hmm. from it. So that's where the cookbook came from is I started thinking about, I, I put the kibosh on that, but I started thinking about, oh, okay, I'll open another business. I'll open a restaurant, and I started putting the recipes together. So there I was with the recipes, and I still had the desire to to pay forward and to inspire other people to try and, try and travel. Try and travel. Travel. Are there, are there other things that we can find in your book besides recipes? It's tidbits about the culture. Oh. It's just fun and lighting. When I was setting up to talk to you, my I was switching out. I have another special set of headphones and speakers and I was trying to switch it out and see if it worked and I was getting shocked um, because nothing electricity there's nothing grounded here okay. and it, it, so it's a, it's a it's information like that the fact that nothing is grounded you will get shocked everywhere you go touching a light post touching anything anything wow. you touch you get you get shocked mm -hmm. so yes there's little things that would make people go wow I just didn't know that because for me in the U.S., all we learned about was there was a Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. We know nothing about Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And I had friends who visited who thought they needed a machete to get to the hotel <laughs> from the U.S. Because they just didn't know. They thought this was one big rainforest. Right, right. But Hanoi is the size of New York City. It's a city. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of culture here. That's awesome. So, so that's it. The cookbook is... They're pretty serious recipes, meaning authentic and time consuming. Mm -hmm. So there's a lighthearted bit about it with trying to pique someone's interest with the culture. Was it hard uh, picking like one um, or picking several recipes for to include in this book? Very difficult, very difficult because a lot of- How did them, you do it? Well, I started thinking from the restaurant angle. That's what dishes do I really like? and what would other people like so i took it from that aspect what would people enjoy and or be willing to try mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult you have to draw the line where you draw the line mm -hmm. so um i'm a cook not a great okay. cook but i cook. <laughs> um for someone out there who doesn't cook um will this book help them become a better cook in whatever level they're at any, anytime you try a new recipe, it makes you a better cook. Anytime. But what I hope people will do is not take 
whether it's my recipes or someone else's, I hope they don't take recipes seriously. Mm -hmm. I hope if their recipe, it does not turn out the way they wanted it to, I hope they at least learn from it. So for me, for my recipes, I try to cut back as much as I could mm -hmm. while still keeping the recipes authentic. But I, they are time consuming, but they are authentic. So the difference is when I speak to, especially on social media, to people back in the States, going back to the Americanized or Westernized food, if they post a picture of pho or banh mi or something, it's never like anything we have here. So I'm hoping that just trying the recipe, they'll understand that it's different and they'll appreciate the ingredients used in them. From there, if they want to try it again and try to perfect it, that's up to them. But I hope with any recipe, it's just this should just be about fun and then learning and learning. And going back to what you were telling us about storytelling, um, I can only or I can imagine that each recipe has a story. And I feel like whoever is going to pick up your book and try these recipes, they'll be creating their own memories. Um, with maybe their loved one or whoever they're cooking with, right? Hopefully. What you should never do, again, my recipes or anyone else's, is try something new when you have a dinner party for eight people. That's <laughs> not what recipes are for. Right. And even in culinary school, we I went to Johnson Wales, every class, the recipes were adjusted. The recipes that were in print in our books, we the chef would adjust them to how they should be, how he or she felt they should be before we even started making. So you have to think about it. Recipes are no different than your, you have to personalize them just like you would the recipes that are Americanized or Westernized. You have to adjust them for what's available to you or what you like. Mm -hmm. You have to. So you, you um, move there by yourself. Yes. Um, was it a challenge finding like community out there, like your own community? No, because I live in a local area. I, there is an expat area, but I don't live there. I don't go there. I, I don't understand people. I do understand. I, I don't want to, to live there. Mm -hmm. I, so my community is really anywhere there's locals. Yeah. I don't speak the language. I don't need to speak the language. I tried speaking the language. I'm not good at it. So for me, I'm still, even though I live here, I'm still traveling. Mm -hmm. Once a month, I still go explore, but every day I'm still learning. So I'm maximizing what I want to learn from here. So every day, I was afraid there was a, a funeral that just someone, a neighbor just passed. So there was a loud there's a band playing. Uh, those experiences, it would have been unfortunate for this conversation with you, no. but it was really loud. Uh, but I, I enjoy that. And that's my community is the local community. What are some of the lessons that you learn um, in your experience that you can share with us? Um, if we're thinking about doing what you did and kind of just pack our bags and and start exploring. Carlos, you need to do this. Have you done it? Mm, no. Well, you know what? Um, <laughs> when I started working in television, okay. I did, you know, I had to move to different places. So I am I grew up in Chicago. My right. first TV job was in Ottumwa, Iowa. Never heard of the place, but okay. I went, went to it. I ended up loving it. And then, um, and I kept moving around every two or three years. Um, right. So in a sense, I I, I kind of did that, but here in the U.S., I didn't do that outside uh, the country or or whatnot. And I think when I first moved to New York, I didn't. Now in reflection, I see that that interest was always in me, that curiosity. Mm -hmm. When I first moved to New York, every three months I would live in a different neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I would sublet just so I could learn the different neighborhoods because mm -hmm. if. If not, you typically, most New Yorkers only know their neighborhood or where they work. That's where you go. Uh, yeah. But I didn't realize that. I was just curious. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. I, now, in retrospect, I realized that curiosity was in me to, to explore. What would my advice be? My advice would be do it. 
you had mentioned <clears throat> you were talking about um, uh, personal trainers. Yes. So th there are many examples like that personal trainers or meditation or eating healthy, all the things that would typically fall under that New Year's resolution uh, title that most people fail at. Now with those, and I agree, uh, it's very difficult to create new habits, but for traveling by yourself, it just takes one time. So if I said, okay, you get a personal trainer and you only need it once, every, everyone would jump at the opportunity. No one wants that commitment of working out every day and the, the cost every, the thought of the cost every day. But the, the traveling, you don't have to do it for the rest of your life. You just have to do it once. And I think you'll agree with me if you know anyone who's traveled, you, you'll never meet someone who's traveled by themselves who returns saying, don't do it. Never, ever. Sure. They always, <laughs> when they just try to describe it, it's usually such an experience that they can't even put words in, uh, around it. Mm -hmm. They have a very tough time, and I do, explaining how life-changing it is. It doesn't mean you, you're, again, suddenly spiritual or big changes that will upset your, the path of your future. Mm -hmm. But it's, you ask someone how their vacation is or was, they'll say it's good. It was fun. And I ate a lot of food. I hung out with friends. I went to the beach. You ask someone who traveled solo, truly traveled, not vacation, never <laughs> will they not recommend it. It's a one-time life-changing experience. Oh, yeah. And you, you talk about um, the difference between traveling and vacationing. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Huge. It's, and the, the more I talk about it, the more I realize I try to fine tune the differences mm -hmm. because someone was saying, oh, I traveled, I stayed in a uh, tree house in Costa Rica. Well, you know, the more I pry, I realize, oh, that tree house that was surrounded by other expats. It was an Airbnb tree house. That's not really traveling. So traveling is maximizing your ability to learn about that place so that's not really or someone says oh i went to 20 countries last year well that doesn't mean anything you know mm -hmm. flying somewhere and staying at a hilton and or an all-inclusive resort is not traveling collecting passports is not passport stamps is not traveling so you really have to have the goal of being uncomfortable um, and Again, the maximizing is the operative word, maximizing your ability to learn about that place. And like we shouldn't wait until retirement, right? No. There's so many places I went to where I can't, I could barely climb up wherever it was that I needed to go, or there, you, you need to be younger and fitter. You don't have to, but if you want to, again, if you want to maximize, if you want to mm -hmm. see everything, that lady I was talking about in the hotel, mm -hmm. I admire her so much. I still kind of keep in contact with her. Um, I do. Um, but she, there was a, there's a, a viewpoint in outside of Hanoi that she went to, it was 440 stairs or something. And she only made it up a hundred stairs because she couldn't, she didn't have the ability to, but she went up as far as she could. Um, so she walked those hundred steps or something. She maximized the, that's the point is she tried as hard as she could to do it, to get up those stairs, to see that viewpoint. She didn't skip it. And that's kind of important too, is she tried to do her best. Yeah. That's but yeah, cool. you have to be younger. You, you should be younger. You should do it while you can. Otherwise it's 20 years of not having that understanding of another culture. Mm -hmm. Why would you wait? Why, why would you put that off? Right. If it's going to change how you view everyone around you, why would you wait until you're retired? Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. Carlos, you got to do it. I'm thinking about <laughs> it. That sounds interesting. Actually, uh, in two weeks, I'll be heading to New York. So if you have any recommendations. Um, what are you doing there? How long? For how long? Uh, Wednesday through Monday. Okay. It's, I mean, New York, you have to, cram in as much as you can see you know yeah. if you and a lot of times don't get me wrong you want to include tourist things when you travel 
And sometimes the tour groups are beneficial because they can get you in and out of places a little bit faster than if you were by yourself and a little easier. Mm. But there's, there's a fine mix. If you're in New York for a few days, then most people want to see what they are, the, the image that is already in their mind. So when you're in New York, you want to see Central Park from above. Mm -hmm. So you have to go to the Empire State Building or Top of the Rock, one of the buildings, to see that view. Why wouldn't you? Right. Why wouldn't you? It, sure, there's a line. Sure, it's expensive. Sure. But that's the image that they're telling you to see. That That's the world, the, the marketing department, the whomever. Yeah. <laughs> they're saying this is the image that you want to see. So why not spend exactly. two hours going through that process? So earlier you, you mentioned that you um, share your travel experience um, on social media. How can we connect with you? Um, you can find me on my website, paulbkennedy.com, or on Twitter, Paul in Vietnam is my, I'm the most active there. I do have Instagram, Facebook, but most of my, my interaction is in, on Twitter. All right. Paul Kennedy, thanks you, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Safe travels and God bless you. Thank you, Carlos. I expect to hear about your travels. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this episode. It was written and produced by yours truly, Carlos Correa. My theme is by Skin Gales. Check out my website, carlostonight.com, for the very latest on the podcast. See upcoming guests and check out past episodes. That's carlostonight.com.